Geek alert. Here we go. Okay, so <laughs> speaking of, my lovely and talented friend Daniel Steinhardt is here from Gig Rig. And he's a, he's a, well, yeah, stop, a round of applause. He's my smart friend, who's actually a really awesome musician as well. And uh, he has designed, and he's actually built my pedal board, but he's designed the, uh, the kind of the control system for this called the gig rig. So we'll start with the gig rig, because that's what everything is running through at the moment. And it's, it's a clever and amazingly well built and designed. Uh, switching system that allows me to use a variety of pedals um, and helps also operate the amplifier, meaning I can change channels by programming the different presets. Um, incredibly easy to use, which is good for me because anything too complicated and I'm going to move on, you know, kind of deal. Has to be easy to use. Um, so everything is kind of controlled and running through the gig rig. Um, I guess let me just actually just play through a couple of my basic settings, and that's the best way to kind of explain how I'm running things. Like I mentioned earlier, today I'm running everything into the front end, at least the pedals. Uh, my, my timeline echo is actually running into the effects loop, but for now I'll just deal with what's in front of the amp, and that's being controlled by the gig rig. Um, if you hear just a plain clean sound from me... It's always the it's the clean channel, obviously, but it's, it's always have the Carl Martin compressor on. And they recently designed uh, in my co with my cooperation a, a dual compressor, so it's the Andy Timmons signature uh, compressor limiter by Carl Martin. And the reason I wanted a two channel one was because the main Carl Martin that has been my favorite compressor for years. I didn't really use it mainly as a compressor. I'm using it as a as a boost and a pretty significant boost. If I turn this pedal off. That's just the amp, and that's how low volume the amp actually is. But for you to look at the controls, the compression is nearly off, but the gain of the, you know, the output is, is, is past noon. Um, so not in this setting, it's not really acting as a compressor nearly as much as just a boost. It's called, I call it fat footing, where my the switches are close together, my compressor, my... Anyway, I changed patches. Um, now, I have another setting where I'll use the other side of the compressor. That's the reason for the, the signature pedal is that... Oh, but sometimes you want that real squish, squishy kind of really compressed sound. And I'll go to this setting here. <laughs> And that's the cool thing about the gig rig also is that not only can I change different patches on, you know, uh, go to different pedals, I can also, if there's a, a switching on the pedal itself, I can hook up the, the gig rig to do that as well. So I'm actually hitting a button it ch and it changes uh, the patch on the pedal. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> That kind of tone, it really kind of really loves single coils. So this guitar really isn't a single coil, but I can kind of emulate it. funky with yourself with that okay um okay so that's that's the kind of cleanish tones that i might go for now there's a there's a mid gain tone that i use quite a bit um i used it at, at the beginning of strawberry fields i used it for gone uh, i'll use it on electric gypsy later when i play she's leaving home things that I, I kind of i do a lot of stuff on the neck pickup <laughs> So it kind of really sounds like a slightly brighter clean tone, but the, the tone of the pedal that's actually being played... It's, 
fairly gained up, but if I back my volume down, neck pickup, cleans up beautifully, right? You know, so, uh, or I could play this. never expect that tone to come from that right so but it was kind of you know I got the idea of using this pedal a buddy of mine had loaned it to me because he knew I you know I'd, I'd been using the the Mesa Boogie stilettos for a while they were they're decidedly martial circuitry um, when I would play go on live I would use that stiletto on the tight gain channel and my amp had, it, it had an issue or something or I was traveling and they're not, they're not making that amp anymore so it's hard to get a hold of. He said, well, you should try this blues driver. It's a Keeley blues driver. Try that and uh, just back your tone off. I think it's going to sound pretty similar. And it really does. It, to me, it, it tightens up um, and cleans up like that, like that JMP circuitry. So that's, that's been a great uh, discovery for me. Uh, I should also point out on my volume knobs, on the master volume, all my guitars, I usually have what's called the treble bleed mod installed. Uh, you guys probably know about that, but if you don't, I'm sure you can find the circuitry online. It's a simple capacitor and resistor put in line that essentially enables you to maintain the top end of your tone. And traditionally, with a a volume knob, when you would when you would decrease the volume, the sound would tend to get darker. And depending on the gain, that might you know equate to being muddy. So this kind of helps me retain. Retains that crystalline detail. That is an important component of being able to get that tone from that type of sounding gain, right? Um, okay, past that, if I'm my main lead tone tonight has been um, the JHS AT pedal, which is basically it's, it's a signature pedal of mine coming out at the end of next month. But it it, it started off as the Angry Charlie, uh, which is, which is a pedal they had been producing for for several years apparently. But then after when I started using it about a year ago, apparently the sales went up. <laughs> significantly, which is flattering, but then he asked me if I'd want to collaborate on a pedal and modify it and kind of even tweak it a bit more, so that's what we have, and that's what my tone is tonight. So all the, all the, all the main lead gain tones are the, are the AT pedal. Um. And it's essentially, like I say, it started off as the Angry Charlie, but now it's a three-mode you know, pedal, so there's a, a bit more flexibility. And with uh, an increase in the headroom, but uh, and I 
think running, you know, a pedal that has all the all the gain on it, meaning all the all the saturated um, distortion, into a clean channel definitely feels differently. And again, I I, I do still love the Lone Star lead channel, but it, this feels even better to me. I just I seem to have more detail and more control. Sometimes you know the actual amp distortion, you know, feel like I'm pulling. It's not just this amp, it's any amp for distortion. It feels like I'm pulling a bit of weight behind me. Um, so this has just been a nice discovery. Um, and I have two of them on my pedal board. One set up slightly darker for this. Then another one slightly brighter. So I'm having fun with that. Now, there's also uh, there's several other pedals. I used one for the first time tonight that I haven't used in a long time, the Wampler Fuzz, which, uh, thanks to Daniel helping me sort some things out, uh, is, is uh, working lovely. And I use that on the end solo of Strawberry Fields. And this is one of those pedals, though. It, it, any any kind of big muff type fuzz, which is my favorite. I've got this old green Softech uh, Electro Harmonics big muff. It's such a fat tone that after you go away from it, everything else sounds kind of small. But So I'm going to have to work on that and figure out how to get the levels right so it doesn't sound wimpy when I go away from it. Um, so that's a fun pedal. Um, for She's Leaving Home, I did, I used that, uh, a carbon copy that I have just set up for that specific. Because the harpist that, they, that came in to play the session um, was actually just playing. That's the harp part. They just added a slap back echo to it, right? So that's a fun little thing to do. Um, and the solo I do in um, Helipad, the second song that I played, I've got a, an oct Octavia that's called the Octafuzz, and it's made by a, a, a Sao Paulo, Brazil-based company called G&I that I also endorse some of their, some of their work. And it's basically like that Hendrix uh, Octavia sound like on Purple Haze. So it's kind of like a real ratty upper octave distortion. I didn't use the pog, but it's there. It's an electro harmonics pedal that has a, you can have a, a lower or a higher octave uh, to go to, but it's pretty mean sounding. Another another pedal is the uh, GNI Analog uh, Chorus. That's the pedal, uh, the company that I mentioned from Brazil, and I'll use that on some of the clean tones or. Kind of more of extreme. But it's two it's two channels also, so I can switch it to. Most important pedal though, my sonic research tuner, because I like to tune in between performances so I can at least get the guitar close because we know it's never really in tune, right? Kinda, kinda kinda close. Um that's pretty much it. I have a okay now the echo sound, that's an important component here, obviously. Um you know, as you may have noticed, I'm sure that I use too much echo. <laughs> But I like the I like the sound of tape echo or the deluxe memory man um, kind of echo that's slightly out of tune, you know. 
Um, so I have a patch set up. This is the Strymon timeline that I've been using for a while now. And live, I used to use two Electro Harmonics Memory Man, Deluxe Memory Man Echoes. Why I like those so much um, is that there was uh, modulation available on the repeats. So your guitar sounds not chorused, but the repeats of the echo are. And what that does, and that's, so I basically emulated the sound of that with the dual, the dual uh, echo setting here. So two, two different delay times, essentially 500 to versus 375 milliseconds. Um, consider the dotted, dotted eighth quarter note pattern. Um, but if you'll notice, now I'll play a chord and listen to the repeats. They get, they get, they gradually fade and, and get out of tune. Hear that? But if I sustain the chord, the, the, the chord is in tune, hopefully, and, but then everything around it creates, I call it the halo. It's like a halo of, of ambience around the note. And that, just something I've always loved the sound of. Not only for chords, but for the for the single note thing, because you know I like something that gives the impression of even more sustain than I'm getting with the actual guitar tone. I like it to to kind of hang a certain way, and so that, um, I'm using it basically for that. And I feel quite naked without it, to be honest. Um, and I'm also controlling the echo level. It's it, it, the other beautiful thing is the electro harmonic stuff is cool, but it was always breaking down on me. But this thing's really reliable. And it, you can employ an expression pedal, which you can have control any parameter of your, of, of your presets. But I just have it set up to control echo volume. I can go from zero to whatever. Anywhere from minimal to extreme. guy named David uses this kind of setting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, David, what are your settings? Um, but that's, pre that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. Pedal, pedal run through. Thank you for the question.